There is a rumor going around online that Ivana Lynch, who played whimsical Luna Lovegood, got the part because she wrote a moving letter to author J.K. Rowling in which she opened up about her struggle with anorexia. According to the rumor, Rowling offered Lynch a chance to audition if she beat the disorder, while another version claims that Lynch was offered the part outright if she recovered. The actress did indeed struggle with anorexia and she did send many letters to Rowling and has stated that her correspondence with the author helped her during her struggle struggles with the eating disorder. However, following her recovery, Lynch actually flew to London for an open audition for the part and Rowling had no idea that she was to be at the audition. So Lynch's letter to the Harry Potter author had no impact on the decision to cast her and it had probably more to do with the fact that Lynch was at drama school and simply a talented actress. Millions of girls probably dreamed of playing the part of Hermione Granger, but Emma Watson was apparently not one of them. In fact, the actress didn't plan to audition and only when casting agents came to her school to hold open auditions and all her friends went, did she decide to tag along for a laugh. Luckily, the agent saw potential in Watson and she went on to sign a contract to play Hermione for four movies. However, following Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the actress almost walked away from the franchise, feeling like she couldn't commit commit to filming a further four movies, Watson was ready to quit Harry Potter and focused on her education among other things. Thankfully, Warner Brothers recognized her importance within the franchise and decided to adapt the shooting schedules to be more accommodating of Watson's needs. And much to everyone's relief, the actress ended up signing on for the rest of the films. While Emma Watson apparently wasn't too keen on starring in the Harry Potter films, Draco Malfoy actor Tom Felton tried his luck several times. He initially auditioned for the role of Harry Potter, and after being turned down for the role, he went to audition for Harry's best friend Ron. He wasn't chosen for that part either, but eventually landed the part of Draco Malfoy. And while it sounds like Felton must have been a huge fan of the series, he actually hadn't even read the books at the time, only starting to do his research after he had already been cast in in the movie. Jamie Waylett starred as Vincent Crabbe, one of Draco Malfoy's two dim-witted bodyguards, but it was surprisingly cut from the big screen after the first six films, even though the character appears in all of the books. However, it turned out that Waylett had had a few run-ins with the law, which apparently got him fired from the franchise. Having trouble coping with the pressure of fame, the actor was accused of abusing cocaine and marijuana in 2006, with some tabloids claiming that he was constantly using and even going to Harry Potter years while high. Three years later, police searched his car and came across some bags of weed and a knife of a size which is illegal to carry in the UK. Police also found some plants at his mother's house and Waylett ended up being charged with possession. He was sentenced to community service and was cut from the Harry Potter films. Unfortunately, things got even worse for Waylett, who eventually landed in prison after being arrested for his participation in the London riots of 2011, including possession of a Molotov of cocktail and cannabis possession. So, while it is Crab who originally destroys the diadem by casting a dark magical fire spell in the Harry Potter books, Jamie Waylett's conviction for drug possession in between films 6 and 7 meant that Malfoy's other bodyguard Gregory Goyle, played by Josh Herdman, is the one who suffers Crab's fate in the movie version. A lot of J.K. Rowling's ideal casting choices ended up being picked for the movies, and although there was a lot of secrecy around the plot of her then still unreleased books, the author actually told one actor how his character's story would pan out in the upcoming books. The late Alan Rickman was the only cast member who knew what would happen to his character, Professor Snape, as Rowling trusted him enough to tell him in advance. Mr. Potter. Our new celebrity. Rickman's performance in the movies was amazing, but it is even more fascinating to watch him knowing that he was fully aware of Snape's fate. 
Many young actors struggle with the pressure that comes along with fame, but while most Harry Potter stars have managed to grow up without making the headlines for using drugs, Waylet was not the only one who had problems with substance abuse. Daniel Radcliffe has actually admitted to regularly getting blackout drunk while filming the final movies, and even though the Harry Potter actor was legally old enough to drink at the time, this was obviously an issue he had to deal with. The Harry Potter star had since talked about how unhealthy and reclusive he became during that time and how he eventually decided to swear off alcohol in 2010. The actor has been sober ever since, despite the occasional headline claiming that Radcliffe has been spotted with a drink and he credits co-star and on-screen godfather Gary Oldman with helping him realize that he had a problem. Oldman, who starred as Sirius Black in the Harry Potter movies, has struggled with alcoholism as well and was able to help Radcliffe kick his unhealthy habit before it could ruin his career. And I met some really key people, some of them actors, some of them not, um, who just gave me great advice and really cared for me. The part of Harry Potter wasn't Daniel Radcliffe's first acting job. In fact, he had already appeared as young David Copperfield in the eponymous British TV series and made his film debut as Mark Pendle in The Tailor of Panama. So it was actually producer David Heyman who asked Radcliffe to audition for the role of Harry Potter. However, the young actor's parents didn't want to let him audition for the part initially since the original deal reportedly meant that Radcliffe had to sign on for six movies, all filmed in Los Angeles, which they felt was too big of a commitment for a 10 year old boy. Thankfully, plans for shooting were later changed, with the filming location being switched from the US to the UK. In addition to that, Radcliffe was also offered a shorted contract, which led his parents to change their minds. The audition went smoothly, and Radcliffe landed the part, of course, becoming a huge star who is recognized all around the globe. Rupert Grint's hair might be the most obvious thing he has in common with his character Ron Weasley, but it is not the only one. In fact, one of the biggest similarities between the actor and his character is their extreme arachnophobia. You heard what Hagrid said. Follow the spiders. They're heading to the dark forest. Why spiders? Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? Everyone knows that Ron is really scared of spiders, but what most people don't know is that Grint didn't seem to have to act for it. The actor has even said that he has never watched the full scenes from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which feature Hagrid's giant spider friend Aragog. When asked about his experience of working with spiders in the film, Grint replied, I hate them. Even rubber ones I get scared of. Luckily, some of them were CGI, but that car-sized one, that was actually there, unfortunately so that wasn't my favorite scene to film. Dame Maggie Smith is one of the most successful British actresses who can look back on a long career even before ever being cast as Professor McGonagall in the Harry Potter films. Pierre Totem Locomotor! She was J.K. Rowling's first choice for the role, but following the fifth installment in the series, it was feared that Smith might not be able to return to the franchise as the actress was battling breast cancer at the time. Luckily, Smith was well enough to film despite undergoing chemotherapy. She had to wear a wig in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, the sixth part of the series, but eventually made a full recovery, appearing in the last two installments as well before going on to star in the critically acclaimed TV series Downton Abbey among others. Many of you will be shocked to hear that Tom Felton wasn't the only one who hadn't read the books when he auditioned for the part in the movie. Daniel Radcliffe had actually not read the books either, having only started Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone at one point but not finished reading it because he didn't enjoy it. Other sources claim the actor didn't give up until the second book, but either way, you can take comfort in the fact that Radcliffe decided to give the books a second chance after landing the part of Harry Potter. Perhaps he was too young the first time around because the actor soon became an avid fan of the series just like the rest of the world. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.